Um, so are you down to eat chicken salad on the next episode? I say what now? <laughs> are you down to eat chicken salad on the next episode? I, I don't recall any mention of chicken salad, I don't know. <laughs> All right, well then you're fired if you're not, because in the US, a professional footballer was fired because he requested to eat pizza instead of chicken salad. And the coach took that as a sign of disrespect. Nice. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> if you eat chicken salad or if you don't want to eat the chicken salad, you know, that's obviously disrespectful. Um, <laughs> of all the things to get fired, is this like a, an NFL player or like a lower league? It's the, there's like a new league that started that's like the division below that. And then, um, yeah, the guy's been fired for not eating chicken salad. Nice. <laughs> As he should be, because that's just a scummy move. I, I mean, you know, maybe he just had a problem with the kind of pizza he was ordering or... No, 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 no. He wanted the pizza, but because he asked for pizza yeah. instead of the chicken salad, the yeah. coach said that that crossed the line. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, maybe the coach was just like, you want a pineapple pizza? Fuck you. Uh, chicken salad is the is the meal that we're having as a team. But I don't know. I mean, come on, man. That's... That, that's um, Both are kind of Dick moves. Get your pizza later. Have a and little he, bit of This guy was supposedly the, the the most recognizable player in this league. This brand new league that launched. Uh, okay, so <laughs> so the coach is like been like, hey, I'm the big dick around here. You can you can eat fucking chicken salad because I can fucking <laughs> you. Yeah. Moral of the story is eat your chicken salad. And... Uh, from now on, uh, it's chicken salad all day. So the next yeah. episode, you're turning up eating chicken salad or it's over. All right. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> no, no, if buts or maybe. Otherwise, it'll be considered a sign of disrespect. Noted. Prepare for disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, a duck has solved a murder. A what now? A duck <laughs> solved the murder. <laughs> Inspector duck solved the murder. <laughs> a pet duck cracks the case after finding makeshift grave with grandmother's body inside. Um. Okay. <laughs> so, so these people allegedly murdered their grandmother, mm-hmm. and the duck led investigators to the decomposing remains. How did this? Happen? I mean, what drugs were they taking to be led by a duck? And also, just, just, I, I, I get people murdering their their grandmother. That happens. It's, it's okay. Um, well, that seems like a pretty direct that. threat. I mean, I wouldn't want to have <laughs> your grandmother. I don't have any grandparents at the moment. <laughs> okay. That, that they're, they've all passed on. Uh, so, that, I mean, Under, you know, I was yeah. young. Did, did any ducks look into these? The, the the, uh, the, stay away from ducks for <laughs> obvious reasons um but <laughs> um but y- you know i mean like it happens i i've read things about that i've seen it on netflix but i don't understand the duck element of this <laughs> like how does a duck well the sheriff said that um find a makeshift the sheriff came out and said that if he could give the duck a medal he would okay why doesn't he then so a, pet, a pet belonging to the new renters who currently occupy the charged couple's former car, uh, former trailer ran underneath the mobile home, leading investigators to a makeshift grave underneath. So let me get this straight. The people moved into this mobile trailer and the, they had a pet duck. The pet duck <laughs> ran underneath and they were like, it's called the fucking cops. <laughs> Something's going on. Like, just go get your fucking. Dog. But all right. So, so he, they found uh, they, they, and they found a body. They dug up the whole thing, and but I, I still don't understand why. Like, did the duck start freaking out? Did it dig up part of the body? Why? How did this happen? There sounds like there's more to this that they're not saying. Yeah. Well, the duck, the duck 
basically went there and I guess obsessed over the area where the body was. And I, I think the biggest thing out of this is that the, the sheriff saying he would get the duck a medal if he could. Why the fuck don't you? Go well, get, I mean, what's the problem? Well, my biggest lesson out of it is if you're going to murder your grandparents, don't let the new occupants of your trailer home have a duck. Well, what I'm going to say is bury it far away, bury the body far away from your house <laughs> you're eventually going to rent. Don't like, don't like leave it in the garden far away. <laughs> You yeah, go. you probably don't want to, yeah. Or don't move out. There you go. That's, I mean, that's smart right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's many, many flaws in this uh, this murder scheme that went on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I guess if you're going to murder your grandparents and bury them under your trailer, you're probably not the highest thinking people. I think the, the IQ was about 57 on this one, uh, for sure, because if you're going to, as I said, the, the thing is, don't leave evidence lying around. And they, they literally were on top of the evidence the whole time. Like, come on. It, it, it does gotta, seem like a, the kind of the basic element of how to get away with murder would be don't leave evidence under your house. No, like you've got a neighbor. Put it under their house. Be like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, they did. Kill my grandparents. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't feel like this was a smart move in any way. Yep. Well, um, in continuing with our constant theme of um, weird airport airline stuff, a flight attendant reveals fourteen insane things they've witnessed in the air. Hmm. So the first one. The first and only time I hooked up with a pilot was on an overnight flight to Las Vegas. He knocked on my hotel door about 30 minutes after I got to my room and asked me to have a drink downstairs. Um, and then the, he, he took her to a strip club. Nice. <laughs> and um, yeah, basically they, they went and got it on, which doesn't seem very as shocking. Um grown-ups yeah um, yeah yeah <laughs> but then the next one is an air marshal approached her and said that basically it's okay no one will have to find out it's not like your husband is here except then she was married to a pilot who was the pilot of the plane which would be a very awkward conversation you would think yeah <laughs> This is this is weird. So so what is the situation? So she, so she went on a trip with a pilot, like obviously work trip with a pilot. They're staying. They're all staying. The crew staying in a hotel. He knocked on her door. They went for a drink. They went to the strip club. They went back to someone's room. Did lots of nasty stuff to each other. And then the next day, other people knew about it. Is that no no no, no. separate story? So Oh, okay. One can only assume that they then got married and lived happily ever after, but then were approached uh, by an air marshal and... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you got to be careful doing that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these progressively get wilder. So, um, I, was, I, I was coming down the aisle on a flight from Aruba. Two couples were sitting either side of the aisle sharing their vacation pictures on a laptop back and forth. As I pulled the beverage cart down, I glance at the laptop. I see a pic of one of the women lying on her back on a bed naked. The other guy in the photo was aiming at her lady bits with a spear gun with a dildo attached. <laughs> Always good to show off in public. I didn't think they could see our photos. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one, I had a passenger that bit off his toenail making a small clippings pile on the small console of the seat. This is why I hate people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> what a time to think I need to, and not only I need to clip my toenails, but I need to wipe them off. Yeah. Like just while I'm on a flight, like, you know, of all the times you got, that's not the best time. <laughs> so. I mean, they're also going to go take your shoe and sock off and yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, the next one, a colleague walked in on a guy, oh, sorry, on a woman who was sitting on the toilet who forgot to lock it. He stepped in without seeing her and was between her legs. <laughs> she, <laughs> she tried to pull up her panties up quickly, but couldn't because he was standing on them. Now, this one seems, I think, a bit made up, but whatever. Yeah, this... What? So, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a real... The next one, there was a Hollywood star flying in first class. In the middle of the night, during the red eye, the flight attendant call button kept chiming on and off. I ran to business class and there was no problem. I ran to first class and it was the Hollywood star and his manager in the bathroom. Apparently, his or her ass was hitting the call button. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I wish we knew which Hollywood star this was because that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, that's um, th that's always a danger. You got to look out for those call buttons. So yeah, I mean, I think that the you know, basics of that. Um, the next one, um, a guy basically met a girl sitting next to him on the plane, and then he asked her for condoms, and then they said that they don't have any. And then she supposedly said, just go into the bathroom and get a blowjob. What? And then they what ended like, this? <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> it does really, though, seem like this flight attendant has just made up a bunch of stories and then they progressively get. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The next Even one, like... the next one is a young teenage couple were getting it on under blankets. Yep. She had to go there three times to tell them to stop because there were children that kept walking past them. Um, a guy and a girl, they sit, they go into the bathroom. They went twice together. Oh. And then he came, they came back and sat, she sat on his lap. As you do. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like maybe they just had um, separation issues. That's, yeah. They couldn't be apart. So, you know, people are quick to judge, but, you know, they might not have been up to what people think they were. Now, this one is quite interesting. So once there, I once had a dad bring it to my attention. The passenger next to him was watching porn on the plane. But she says yeah. that there aren't any laws that say you can't watch porn on a plane, apparently, which. True. I mean, they probably only watching for the is. story. Like, <laughs> well, it was, it was some of the best acting I've seen in a long, long time. Um, <laughs> um, you know, also this was this guy was the worst plumber. This guy in this movie I was watching, but um, <laughs> <laughs> get anything done, the, the leak was still there. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, there surely or there probably isn't a law against it, but you, I mean, it's still not the right place. Now, this um, last one, again, this, this kind of just proves how wildly crazy this is. But a passenger was a quadriplegic and brought a service monkey with him on the plane. The monkey started going nuts on the flight. It was feeding on the other passenger's food and started spewing the food all over the plane. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> um, pretty standard flight, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've never seen anyone with a service monkey. So, yeah, I mean, I've seen photos online of people bringing weird animals, but yeah, service monkey does seem. I saw apparently um, if a panda has to be transferred, they put him in with the passengers and it just sits in a normal seat like a person. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that be? <laughs> well, at least they wouldn't get uppity if you're watching porn on the flight. Yeah, they'd probably help you. I mean, I mean, you know, just leave you alone. <laughs> um, well, the next story, human communes on Mars could be made by space bricks that mix urine and Martian soil. So basically, scientists are trying to make bricks for planes, sorry, for houses on Mars out of mixing Mars soil with urine. I 
think they should try harder to come up with something else. <laughs> they, should, they should like should be like, what else can we do? Like this is a last resort. What there has to be some other way. To do it. Like, what you wouldn't be excited to live in a house made of urine? It depends on the diet of the person who was peeing, because it well, could be, be your own. You wouldn't want someone yeah, else's. Yeah, my diet's <laughs> fucking awful. So <laughs> <laughs> I want an, uh, I wanted someone else. Uh, so someone else's diet. Um, I, I I don't know. I feel like I again. I feel like there's another way for them to do this. Uh, surely, I mean, in order to create the urine, you have to drink. You could just send more fluids for drinking. I guess. I, I I don't know. There's another way. Figure it out, science. Don't be fucking lazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe excrement would be better for. I I am not moving to Mars <laughs> until they sort this shit out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Literally, sort this shit out. Yeah. Well, right. how many? So there was a um, bank holiday last weekend in England. So how many pints do you think that they drank over the three day weekend? 17 lightweights. Wow, you hit it. 17 <laughs> across the whole country. <laughs> let's say in the UK, I don't know. Um, uh, let's say how many people are there over there? Like 60 million or something. So let's just go like 300 million. Wow, you're especially well off. Um, <laughs> it was only 50 million. Um, Turns out they're not as alcoholic as you assume. I keep forgetting they're not Irish. Sorry. <laughs> Apparently, they still had to get extra um, orders in because there were so many drinks. Um, but no. yeah, 50 million in a long weekend. I mean, that's less than one per person. So. Well, you do have to realize that there are like kids and old people that don't drink. Not acceptable. So, <laughs> so the, you know, the people who do drink got to take up the slack. Come on, guys. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty poor numbers right there. Uh, but, all right. And they published this with, with a sense of pride. <laughs> Whatever. Um, we probably did that in Ireland here at the same time. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On the, I just on the one day, not the. Yeah. Yeah, not the three day weekend. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this following story is pretty wild. A um, a passenger who is a fly in fly out worker. So that means that they basically they fly to go work in mines for. They'll like do one week working, one week off. Anyway, so um, he told a woman on a flight to show us your tits, threatened to bash other travelers and urinated on him with the door open, was only stopped when a quote, large Maori sat next to him as he's banned from the airline for a year. Was he just trying to get time off work? Is that why? He was? <laughs> it's like, I can't fly. I literally can't. They won't let me. Uh. He invited a flight attendant in with him um, when, um, when she approached him about it because he was pissing with the door open. As you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then he launched a torrent of vile abuse at another for not drinking with him on the plane. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Good guy. Yeah. So, yeah. He, um, where, where did this happen? I understood. He then um, bombarded the passenger next to him with a range of slurs because the guy wouldn't drink with him. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, he then warned the man when he would die when he got off the plane, that he would die when he got off the plane. Wow. But he told the guy's passenger, show me your tits and all will be forgiven. <laughs> So I think this is the new law of the skies. If you don't drink with a man, your wife has to show you that person your tits, her tits, to make it okay. 
my sincere question about this mm-hmm. is why did nobody knock him the fuck out? Um, because if he's being that much of a pain in the arse, just fucking knock him out. Well, basically, what they did is they said quick thinking air crew, then swap swapped the victimized couple next to him with a large Maori, it says, who successfully intimidated him into behaving. Okay, that's one way of doing it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's I, I don't I don't know why people act like that on planes. Like maybe they get like flight madness or something. But uh, but yeah, I do I do think most problems can be sh- solved by showing some tits. That's just it's just, <laughs> it's just a calming, calming thing where people are like, oh yeah, then the situation resolved. So yeah. more more of that. <laughs> less of the less of the being a dick to people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he ended up only getting a two thousand five hundred dollar fine and was banned from the airline for a year. Yeah, I reckon this guy planned it. He was like, "I'm going to get banned off this plane for a year. I can't go to work. Oh no, got to get some time off." His boss had probably told him, "No, you can't. You can't book that two week vacation." He's like, "Fuck you! I'll take it off." <laughs> it is a trick really if you if you need to get off work yeah there are ways there are ways um <laughs> now you wrote into a um advice column asking for some advice um mm-hmm. in the week so um you wrote in saying um sorry let's get the full one not just the headline but basically um so you started with my girlfriend went behind my back and sold all of my records, vintage clothes and collectible toys without asking me first. Mm-hmm. I came home from post, uh, from a posting abroad to find my garden man cave stripped bare and turned into a girly gin den. Fairy lights and a pink neon bar now take pride of place where my beloved record player and train set used to stand. My green leather. Now look, you filled it with a, bunch of bullshit that, that we don't need to go into but you then said i can forgive a lot of things but taking my vintage porn to the dump is too much those classic magazines and dvds got me through some dark nights during my younger days and now they're landfill now i think it's unfair of you to try to blame it on someone else when you obviously did this yourself and turn it into a girly den and then regretted throwing out all your vintage porn. Changes had to be made. That's true. But, um, you know, at the same time, uh, I did not dispose of that valuable, collectible vintage material. Maybe this, is, this story is linked with the last one. And this is why the guy got so upset and got so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That would make a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. So, um, I, th- <laughs> I think uh, I think that's a reasonable response is to is to get upset right into your local newspaper column or agony aunt column, whatever it is, and be like, "Why did you do this to me? It's the last straw." Don't solve your own problems right into the paper. I'll say to do it. Yeah, so. and then then it gives you an excuse in court. <laughs> I was outraged that my wife had thrown out my vintage porn collection and struggling to cope. And that's why I <laughs> asked the guy to drink just, with me. Just hope you get a, a judge who has the same like uh, interest. Yeah. Uh, and kind of collection because then they'll, they'll get it. They'll get it. So it's a, it's a secret to it all. Um, now the next one is on your favorite airline. Passengers, Ryanair. yes. Passengers nice. fume after Ryanair forgot and left them stranded at an airport in Blunder. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, it says more than ten Ryanair passengers missed their anticipated flight to Malaga over the weekend after the airline allegedly forgot about them as they stood waiting at the gate. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, so it's, 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 they charge extra if you don't want to actually get on the plane and go where you're going. Come on. Yeah, the, the, the base ticket only includes the boarding process. 
until you get yeah. to the gate, yeah. not actually getting on the plane. I mean, you got to pay extra for that. And if you're if you're going to complain about it afterwards, that's extra too. So have you paid the, the complaint fee? I don't think you have. <laughs> so it says 14 passengers who'd already checked into their flight, but were somehow left behind waiting to board the flight. Where they... So the ground crew put them into, into groups to hop on the airport shuttle to the plane. So it's one of those ones where they bust you to the plane and they yeah. basically just didn't bother to. Uh... <laughs> so they put them on the bus and left them there. <laughs> we saw the last bus leave and there we stayed waiting when passengers said. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the gift that keeps on giving. Um, it's just so many of these stories, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I feel like I feel like at the end of the day, you probably could have said to someone, "Hey, wait a minute, aren't we supposed to be put on the fucking plane <laughs> and th- not just be left standing here like idiots?" Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of those ones where um, I'm sure there was more to it, but. From a passenger side, it was like, oh, we got left behind. Maybe they were just being assholes. Everyone, they were like, let's fuck them on a bus and leave them there. Um, I mean, unless there was no one else there. Like, if they're put in this waiting area and then... Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe they went... Yeah, maybe they got into the wrong place. Somebody just opened the door and they followed them in and they were all standing there. And they didn't listen to anybody. I well, don't know. Or maybe it's their fault for not drinking with their fellow people and showing them yeah. the tips. Exactly. That's it indeed. I mean, I don't know. I feel <laughs> what airport did, was this in London, did you say? No, in um where is it? Palma Son Saint Joan in Mallorca. Oh. oh, all right. Well, I've never been there, so I don't know. But I'm presuming that doesn't sound like a huge international airport to me. It sounds like it might be a small regional one, so it's kind of hard to get lost uh in those. Um who knows? Maybe they were, maybe maybe they were in, in the wrong place. But it's pretty funny at the same time. I think it's funny. Yeah, and then it says it comes after a family were forced to repay for their seats on their way home um, after they found out that their seats had been already allocated to someone else after they already paid for it, and they had to pay an extra thirty euros. When I told the attendant we had no money, I was told it's not my problem. Either pay a further thirty euros each, or sort yourself out. <laughs> I mean, things don't come for free, you know. Um, but yeah, if you've already paid for a ticket, they should probably honor that ticket. But uh, a bit of a weird one. There's just, yeah, anytime I've had to deal with Ryanair staff, their attitude has been, it's not my problem. So I try not to deal with them as often as possible. Um, yeah, it's, that kind of sounds like it's a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> we've no money well you shouldn't have come on holidays then should you if I could but I already up, paid for this well you should have thought about that here's our business model <laughs> charging for everything yeah well um, a dead woman shocked mourners and bangs on the coffin to say she's still alive during her own funeral no yeah well, you know, she's uh, it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> it actually um, also links into that I went to a like an old timey town last weekend, and they um, they had like a thing of like the old coffins, and someone actually invented back in the day to put into coffins a string that goes up to a bell, so that when the person's buried. They could actually ring the bell if they woke up at some point. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so weird if, like, a uh, I don't know, a bug or something got into it. It was just dangling on the line, and it was <laughs> <laughs> making her. You were like, "Oh shit, fucking zombies!" Because <laughs> apparently, but, this uh, used to happen a lot back in the day, where they would people bury, bury someone and they'd be like unconscious for a couple of days or whatever and then they'd randomly wake up and yeah 
Ah, the 90s. It was a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> the 90s, yeah. <laughs> that would be, be pretty terrifying waking up and you're like, wait, I think I'm buried. Oh, on? that would be the worst because <laughs> there's nothing you can do. <laughs> yeah, you're literally fucked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just masturbate ferociously and <laughs> while you have the energy because <laughs> you got a couple of weeks probably of being awake before it all goes to shit. So yeah, that's about all you got. And do you even have room? You probably have room for that. Yeah, it's fine. Uh yeah. Well, I mean anyway. you can make room. <laughs> I mean, you just need a little bit of well, I guess it depends how big you are too. Like then uh like a week and a half in, they're like, oh shit, we buried the guy. He's not fucking dead. They dig you up and you're just covered in your own juice. <laughs> I was buried. So long as I was to do. <laughs> Days are long. No, nights are longer. <laughs> that, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, then on a similar note to that, maybe, I guess, not, I don't know. But um, a woman was born not to have sex with dogs. The cops try to tackle strange sickness. Wait, 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 wait. What? <laughs> Could you say that again? Because what I think I heard. <laughs> a police force has issued a dire warning about strange illnesses coming from human sex with dogs after a viral TikTok video showed a woman boasting about a canine encounter. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, like think it's, of... I think it's important that you know that you need to stop. I feel like there's lots of guys out there who are getting zero action, <laughs> and now they're hearing that their do a, a dog is getting laid more than they are <laughs> with a human woman. <laughs> they're like, for fuck's sake, what have I got to do? <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, so, so this woman was boasting about having sex with a dog? Yeah, so police in Nigeria have issued the bizarre warning after a viral video showed a woman boasting about it. She says that she was once given 1.7 million Nigerian Naira, which is 3,279 pounds, to have sex with a dog. She said, what is the big deal here? There, I only slept with a dog. I didn't kill somebody. You in your life, you have done worse. And besides, have you seen... N 1.7 million before. Gotta be honest. I mean, I yeah, I've seen, seen that a few times. <laughs> no, well, you haven't seen 1.7 million Naira. No, but if I went to the bank and ordered it, I could. Uh, be fine. I don't know how long it would take them <laughs> to collect that much. But, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, what is that all about? Um, I've. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just imagine the next guy she slept with being like, anything you got to tell me? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, I earned 1.7 million naira once. Funny story. I, mean, about I, that. I suppose in different economies, that could be, you know, it could be great. It could be wonderful. But like, I mean, is it? I don't know. I feel like I would want at least 2 million. So. That's, that's just yeah. where we're going to leave that one. Yeah, I feel like you'd be down for two million naira. You know, two million is enough to do what you need to do. Yeah, well, I mean, they have said it's against the law. And moving to another country, Canadian lawmakers are now able to prosecute astronauts who commit crimes traveling between Earth and the moon in the same way they can prosecute prosecute criminals on earth so they brought okay, in laws kind of... for the moon now so what kind of crimes are these astronauts um you know doing well imagine that you're the, that other story of the guy who was uh traveling on the plane and was getting upset that the guy wouldn't drink with him imagine that yep. happened in space <laughs> told you the easy resolution just show them your tips <laughs> it's fine. Well, on, on the ground in space <laughs> just i i don't think um 
I, I think like like astronauts are pretty heavily vetted, so they, they should be like upstanding members of the community. They should. Well, be not now that you can, anyone can buy a ticket. Oh yeah, I guess. I so, guess. So this is the loophole that no one's been thinking about: is that you buy a ticket to space, and then the second you're in, you're on that rocket, one they can't stop you from come and bring you back down straight away. Two, you're basically in literally lawless. It's a good point. Yeah, there are no laws that we know of in space. So murdering your fellow space traveler is technically not grandma. against the law. And also, if you murder your grandmother, it's not like a duck's going to find it in space. Exactly. You just got to leave, leave her on the moon or something. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that's a weird one. Well done, Canada, for being proactive. Um, I guess you know, trying to be the overachiever in the class, but um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so weird. <laughs> now, another place that kind of has lawlessness is um, Sex Island, which is um, a tour that's back now, promising unlimited sex and weed for 3,500 uh, pounds each. The three days, unlimited sex and weed. Yeah. All right. Um, and you get two girls per sure. day. Super day. All right. Yeah. Um, un, un, unlimited availability timeline um, during that day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you get picked where, up. Where is the, this island? So it, it doesn't say. No, you get picked up by at the airport and taken to a private location for oh. three nights, four days. Participants will have the opportunity to have unlimited sex with two girls and can swap girls with other sex seekers. It's a huge swingers party, basically. <laughs> okay, it seems like a reasonable price for. But but it's only limited to 50 tickets for 50 guests. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like that's a business I should have got involved in uh, at the Not ground level late. and I missed out somehow. Yeah. I think you got to combine it all. Do it in space. There you go. There you go. They, they definitely can't shut you down. Yeah, four, four, four days. days in space. Unlimited hookers and weed. <laughs> <laughs> space hookers. <laughs> Pretty there sure are. there's a movie out there somewhere. Space hookers. There would definitely be. <laughs> um, well, last week we covered the person that um, found 200 grand in a thing they bought online um well a guy um bought a storage unit with six million pounds of cash inside of it and he only nice. paid 390 pounds at the auction wow however he was eventually forced to give it up in heartbreaking circumstances nope not happening buddy i'm, not, I'm keeping it as mine so <laughs> what happened um, and the, the second person they got the, when they opened it inside the safe, they were not, they're, they're supposedly normally empty, but it had $7.5 million in cash inside. Um, but then as soon as that happened, um, the lawyers then got involved and they first tried to offer him a million dollars in reward for it, which he turned down. Yeah. Um, the second attempt was $2 million and they okay. decided to cut their losses and just take it. So, so the, <laughs> the offer was you can have $2 million or nothing. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. They were going to sue him and go through. Wow. All kinds of I, mean, I feel like, like though, isn't there a, a thing with those? That's why they have those storage wars shows and stuff where if you have something stored and you don't pay the storage fee, you basically forfeit ownership. And then that's why they can sell it. And with all the but then when you story, have millions of dollars involved, I guess, I don't know. I mean, 
I'm going to start buying storage lockers is what I think is going to happen. It's going to have to go out to like places like California where like, you know, lots of rich people live. Uh, Cause there's not lots of rich people where I live, but <laughs> <laughs> we could just go somewhere where there's lots of rich people and like go to the rich neighborhoods and just go to those storage auctions. Cause for nothing else than you, you will find some very interesting things, I think, and a lot of shit, but there, there you go. But this, I mean, I would have taken 2 million. That's not too bad if you paid 300. It's a good, a good return on investment. Yeah. It's um, pretty good ROI and kind of set you up for whatever, but I mean, you would still win the 7.5 you would think, but yeah. 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 Um, well, I mean, you kind yeah. of negotiate for 50, 50. Yeah. Yeah. Push them up further or, yeah, I don't understand what legal grounds they would have to block it, but unfortunately, they didn't include that in the article, like the biggest. Yeah, they should, but just tip for anyone out there with $7 million, Give don't it leave me. it in a storage oh. locker. <laughs> 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 Some fucker's going to get it on you. <laughs> and if you do, pay the fucking $20 a month <laughs> to keep yeah. it safe. It might so. be worth it. Unless it was stolen money or something, I guess it's the, I don't know. Anyway. Well, speaking of stealing, this, this is a, there was an article about the weirdest um, photos of shocking notes left at workplaces. Nice. So the first one reads, bathroom breaks exceeding five minutes long will be deducted, deducted from your shift. It's going to make so, things awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one, this is about to get a little bit more weird. Um, warning all employees must not eat during work hours. Receive a $20 reward if you catch an employee eating during work hours. Employees with three warnings will be laid off with no exceptions. You know what you do because you want to make money in a workplace environment. You just go around offering people like sweets and biscuits and stuff be like hey then, hey he's eating some fucking food over here. i baked <laughs> a lovely cake for you yeah <laughs> um the next one reads i apologize for us closing again my two new cashiers quit because i said their boyfriends couldn't stand here for their entire shift don't hire Gen Zs. They don't know what work actually means. Now hiring baby boomers only. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it sounds like a progressive workplace somewhere you want to be. Um, yeah, very exciting. I mean, if you can't bring your boyfriend to work, what are you supposed to do? It yep. doesn't make any sense, you know. Um, the next one reads, yes, hours have been reduced across the board. Why? After weeks of coaching, our connection score has fallen to a 41. Only 41% of our customers feel we take an opportunity to get to know them. Several partners call out on a consistent basis with no coverage. Your number one priority as a barista is to create a warm and welcoming environment by getting to know our customers. Beginning this week, if you do not meet the expectations after coaching, you'll be sent home, followed by corrective action, up to and including termination if necessary. How does that correct anything? <laughs> corrective action, including we'll fire you. That'll make it better. <laughs> what? what? Uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds more uh, conducive to uh, people looking for a new job. And not wanting to be a barista in your establishment. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Um, you can see, you know, when they draw little pictures in the coffee, uh, you can see everyone being a dick of some nature. <laughs> <laughs> I drew this portrait of our boss. Well, then you get a thing like the next one where it says, we are closed due to Alex walking out. We apologize for the inconvenience. Yeah. <clears throat> Is that all it said? <laughs> yeah. Alex, Alex walked out. <laughs> yeah. The next one is classic. Attention associates. It's hot outside. Want to wear dress code approved shorts? $2 on a month on $2 a day on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or $5 for the whole weekend. Please give your money to front end Christina, Tracy, or people lead Christine in personnel. Wait, you got to pay money to wear... Shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Shorts. 
fuck that. <laughs> I don't care if it's fucking one dollar or ten dollars. You can fuck off. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was just going to mention that um, from now on on the podcast, if you want to wear your glasses, that's going to cost you two dollars an episode. <laughs> All right. Oh, where are you? You're over there somewhere. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um <laughs> no i th- that's who comes up with these ideas like yeah let's let's try and make money off our staff um i mean they're already selling their soul for to be there so leave them alone <laughs> what else we got um there was a form where it says hurt feelings report and they could feel out whether it was um hurt and who the real man who hurt the sensitive little feelings were and then um if you feel the need to, t- to hug someone go home to mommy and let her hug you and change your diaper if you feel oh. as though you need to speak to someone to soothe you please call this number 1-800 cry baby <laughs> wow someone someone is a sensitive soul uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Wow, that's um yeah, I mean it's fine. It's yeah, like, do you need yeah. a tissue for your issue? Oh I do. <laughs> it's fine. No, now there's been a guy who's um feeling your dating moves out there. Oh no. Um it, this article says woman shares worst date ever after man puts penis on plate at dinner. <laughs> classic move <laughs> <laughs> this guy invited me back to for dinner in his place and i got there and i got excited um Dude. i'm like what are you making because i haven't eaten all day and he said sausages i'm like okay that sounds pretty good and then he whipped out his wiener and slapped it on a plate yeah there you go but what she's not telling you is what happened next greatest night of her life so, okay, you can quit bragging. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like that guy, whoever he was, whoever um, he was, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, he'd planned that for a long time. She should, she should realize that he was expecting a different response. <laughs> I mean, it is a pretty funny way to go about it, regardless of what you think of the move. It's still a funny thing to do. <laughs> Is this what you wanted for an entree? <laughs> yes, it might be. <laughs> I mean, it's probably a better move for dessert after things have like settled down, but yeah. I mean, I guess, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, you lost your hair recently, right? Yeah, I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> well, there's no story. I just wanted to highlight it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, um, so this story goes surgeon warns Randy blokes can end up losing hair if they masturbate too much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I can concur. That is the true <laughs> statement. <laughs> Think I shaved this thing? Nope. <laughs> There's a lot of hard work to get through this hair. <laughs> even in this case it does say that um you'd have so it basically makes you deficient in vitamin a um and it does say you'd have to be pretty much non-stop masturbating throughout the day before it had any sort of effect on your hair Mm -hmm. theoretically if you masturbated enough the answer is yes so as dave can attest it is possible Um, I'm glad this research was done. Yeah, I'm I'm glad this research was done. And I and you know, uh if they want more participants in further studies, I'm ready. I've been I've been ready for a long time and uh, already participating in my own research uh for this. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for uh thanks, Dr. Person, for looking into that. <laughs> yeah. Um that's what we need science for you see people some people are not on board with science but this is the real important shit so this is what you get it is yeah we gotta we got to make it count 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I've been saying for quite a while now that I won't be attending the Tony Awards in fear of violence. Mm-hmm. But um, the uh, Tony Awards have listened to me and they've um, decided to put in a no violence policy ahead of their 2022 show. That's good. I'm actually sent out a letter to ticket buyers to say that they were, they're banning violence. (laughs) So it wasn't previously banned. No oversight there. Yeah. So last year you could have been out there attacking anyone at the uh, Tony Awards and got away with it, but Missed my chance. Yeah. Too busy making my hair fall out. So. <laughs> Backstage at the Tony's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> um, now this next story is a bit wild. A Florida woman was awarded $5.25 million after a doctor used his own sperm to impregnate her. Did she go to the doctor asking to be made pregnant? Yeah. So they um, were getting an artificial insemination. And then they took a DNA test and found that the doctor was her, um, the father of the kid. So they, they yeah, they got a donor because of um, the guy had had a vasectomy. Okay. Um, and they thought that they were getting a medical student as the donor. Okay. So it's, I mean, at some point the doctor was a medical student. So maybe it was just a really old sample and it just coincidentally became the guy's. <laughs> like, is, 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 unless he like had sex with the woman accidentally or like, was like, Hey, this is how we get the sperm inside you, uh, <laughs> to make the baby. This is the only way. This is what we, this is what you, you're paying for, uh, and as he did that, this is every chance he was the medical student. I so. think that this is why you failed the ethics section of the uh, medical examination twice. <laughs> <laughs> Zero out of one hundred. <laughs> Didn't even spell it right. So <laughs> ethics. Now he did deny it. But then he actually happened to get a similar suit from a Colorado woman who also accused him of doing the same thing. So it does kind of make it a little bit hard to. Again, maybe he's just a serial sperm donor and it, 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 um, you know, it's not his fault that his is the sperm that is chosen all the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's only fair that he gets away with it. Just, just looking for a way out from a fellow dude here. Uh, you know, we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> As your hair can attest. Yeah. You know, you gotta, you gotta make your way in this world somehow. So time, time is long and so forth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the um, reincarnation of God has a 70 centimeter ponytail. Say what now? Yeah, so the the team dubbed the reincarnation of God um, grew a seventy centi- sorry yeah seventy centimeter hairy tail from his body. I don't think that really happened, but uh, <laughs> no, as, 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 we, as we covered last week, Iggy Pop was the was the Lord and Savior. So I don't know what they're going on with, but all right. Well, he's going viral online, and that's all that matters. Okay. Well, that is that is key. Yeah. And he was initially ashamed of it, but now that he's going viral, he seems to be happy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's one way of 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 making your mark. <laughs> Standing out. Now it's gone viral. It's all that matters these days. So. Yeah. I mean, if if you go viral for something, it's fact. Yeah. Of course. Uh oh, wait a minute. What are we going to go viral for? <laughs> going bold. I think so. <laughs> Damn it. It's supposed to be a secret, but all right. Yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time. 
till people find out. I know, but you know, I was hoping it would be when I was an old man and they think I was just a dirty old man then. So old air man. I As opposed to what before, yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I finally found a Bible that suits me. Sweet. A extremely rare Bible encouraging adultery has been found in New Zealand. Very cool. I mean, not cool. (laughs) The version of the Bible was printed in 1631 and became known as the Wicked Bible or the Sinner's Bible because it contains a mistake that's small in print but monstrous in meaning. It says, Thou shalt, (laughs) it says, Thou shalt commit adultery in the Ten Commandments. Well, if it's a commandment, can't get in trouble for it. Yes. (laughs) What? It says in the Bible it's allowed. In fact, it's commanded. So I had to. I had had to. to. (laughs) I'm really religious all of a sudden. Sorry. Yeah. I I was in (laughs) As of yesterday, I have become very, very religious. Um, now, this is a pretty amazing um, <clears throat> title of an article. Churchill Downs restrooms ready for the most exciting two minutes of flushing in sport. Say what now? Yeah, the toilets are in heavy use on Derby Day at Churchill Downs. Mm-hmm. Um, Uh, so the guy who manages it says, I'm flushed with toilet facts. <laughs> um, and that, um, <clears throat> so he, he says, take Oaks or Derby day, just one of those two days. There is about one flush in each of those 1,800 restrooms every two minutes. That's about 1 million gallons of water. The most exciting two minutes of flushing in sport. 600 bathroom experts are on hand to address any issues that may arise, like a bubbling over. The track also gets no one likes to wait on pins and needles in the slow line. I guess. You know. So the guy who manages the thing has given a view on the toilets and how many, um, yeah. it's definitely not a topic you probably grow up wanting to be the expert on uh, I say, say for yourself it's always been my I dream mean, I mean that's okay don't worry about it um, we can make it happen for you I think I don't think there's too much competition for that job so they um actually so Princess Margaret planned to watch the race from the pagoda close to where the bugler plays the call to the post and people from England that protect the royal family insisted that she have a loo nearby. So there is a toilet constructed on the second floor of the Kentucky Derby winner's stand that was constructed just for Princess Mug. It seems to me like the royal family have a massive <laughs> fascination with public toilets or private toilets or their own toilets. What is going on? This is a secret we've stumbled upon across this podcast. They have something with toilets. Hmm. All right. Good to know. Is it because people called it the throne? They're like, yes, I must have my own throne. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know. That's how you know you're a royal. It's a secret society that they bring you in on. Yeah. Everywhere from now on, I go, I'm just like, will I have my own toilet nearby? <laughs> and can you make one if not? Yeah. Could you install a toilet just for me, please? Actually, fuck the please. Just do it. <laughs> just put in the toilet. And it's not for an- anyone else to use. Uh, you know, it's, 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 that's just how it goes. It'd be like, hey, I'm a member of the royal family, probably. 
probably connected to somebody somewhere. Give me a toilet. <laughs> um, now, a prison inmate in Boone County, Indiana, one of our favorite cities in the world, um, yep. a man currently in jail awaiting the murder trial in the death of his wife, has won the Republican primary for a seat on a township board. He got 60 votes. Nice. Um, and yeah, unless he's, so he's convicted in- or he withdraws before November, um, his name will be on the ballot for the general election. So he is, um, he's awaiting trial for the murder of his wife. Yeah. And he's running for election. Yeah. I mean, he's had a busy year. So, you know, there's, there's, there's times to do these things and probably election year is not the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While he also had an even more busy year. So police said they found blood in, in the master bedroom and bathroom and learned that a wife had recently successfully undergone chemo treatment and had filed for divorce. Okay. So he was and like, this well, guy is going to win the ballot, which is, yeah. It does sound like, uh, um, and yeah. then it, it goes on to say that a probable cause affidavit shows that Andrew confessed to fatally striking Nikki in the face with a gallon sized cement flower pot and then throwing her body in a nearby creek. He confessed to it and and then he went for election or yeah, <laughs> yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well <laughs> that's that's America. You can nothing can hold you back if you want yeah. to go for public office and you've just murdered your wife. Who you just, got a good beat, chance. just beat chemo. Yeah. Yeah. And wanted a divorce. Yeah. And you you admitted you did it. Yeah. Uh Allegedly, okay. I think you probably need to say that, but yeah, Alleg- allegedly, yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, wow, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, now another just classic American story. <laughs> so, <clears throat> an intoxicated man in um, Maine who is causing disturbance, um. Attempted to hide from police under a blanket. <laughs> and he sat outside his house with a blanket over himself, trying to hide from them when they came for him. Or, I mean, you know, I, that should have worked. <laughs> they shouldn't have been able to find him underneath the blanket. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's a foolproof plan right there, but somehow it didn't work. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and now this is a the penultimate American story. Um okay. I think this is the what we finish on, and it is one of the great weirdest stories you could probably just the title. So a Jeep owner is being sued by a dealership employee. For killing a dealer, dealership employee during an oil change. A what? <laughs> so a man took his car in for a routine yeah. oil change. Sure. And an employee died after another employee who couldn't drive a stick shift got behind the wheel to move the Jeep and hit and killed the first employee. So two years later, an attorney for the man who died isn't suing the other worker or the dealership. He's suing the man who owned the Jeep, who was waiting in a lobby and he was just there for a routine oil change. What? How does that, how logically do you come to, I'm going to sue the fucker who owns the car. How does that work? Um, so, um, he starts the engine, removes the clutch, and then a terrible thing happened. The car launched, 
launched and killed my client, the attorney said. The owner could be held liable for millions of dollars in damages because under Michigan law, if someone is injured or killed and a vehicle is involved, the owner of the car is responsible. So and it says that means if you let your friend drive your car and they hit someone or something and that victim sues, they would be suing you and your insurance. I mean and the attorney yes. says that they can't actually sue the dealership because of a legal standard that is involved. I feel I feel like you probably go for the guy who got in the car and couldn't drive a stick shift car. I mean, that's it's his fault. He's the one who this even says that. So even though the boss was negligent. This article says in, in Fox 2, if, in hiring someone who shouldn't have been driving, the victim's family cannot hold the boss responsible. Instead, the remedy for the victim's family is to seek out workers' compensation, which they have under workers' compensation. They will receive wages and medical based on the dependence and how much he made at the time. However, there are mo multiple wrinkles that here because the death involved a car, there is a statute known as the owner's liability statute that means the owner of the car is legally responsible. Well, um, if, he, so if the owner <laughs> gave permission for the driver to drive the car, the owner is negligent. So when he gave the keys over to the employee who was driving, he gave permission to the employee to drive the car this makes the owner legally responsible and automatically liable for the driver's negligence. Yeah, never, never going to live there. Um, and, and then, and if I ever find myself needing to, for whatever reason, never letting anyone drive my car. Uh, so. Well, it gets even wilder. It says, according to this, the, if um, it would be the same if you took your car to a restaurant with a valet and you handed the keys over. Yeah, yeah, I'll just park my own car, dude. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't trust those fuckers anyway, but um, yeah, that's that's bizarre. Uh, I feel like there's there's <laughs> got to be some way where you're like, I didn't know what to do with this. So, yeah. I mean, they don't want much money, though, so it's not that bad. All right. They only want $15 million, so. Oh, okay. Because why? Because the guy died. Yeah, but was he worth 15 million? I well, mean, was the, he making the, that much? the insurance of the car owner has already paid out 100 grand. So there you go. Yeah. Get your 100 grand, move on. Um, like, I, I, if you're coming at me looking for 15 million, if, if it's my car, I'm like, no, you're not getting it. Get out. Um, and then I'm going to borrow someone else's car and come after you. This is what I'm going to do. Be like, hey, can I borrow your car, pal? Got to go and see some people and accidentally drive into a living room. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it's theoretically. <laughs> that's, uh, I feel like that's crazy. That's a crazy law. I can't believe, well, I suppose, yeah, I can kind of believe they're crazy laws in America, but. Um, no, no one has ever one. said that ever. <laughs> I just put it out there. It's a world exclusive. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts, man. That is nuts. But uh, yeah, imagine yeah. taking a car to get an oil change, and now you're, you're being sued for fifteen million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean the prices have gone up lately, but not that bad. <laughs> yeah, if you want to talk about inflation. <laughs> this Jeez, oil change really used to cost fucked. 50 bucks now it costs 15 million dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow that's <laughs> that is a weird one but hey um, just be careful who you're letting drive your car I guess I wonder um, what happens then if Prince Charles gets his toilet installed in a friend's place in Michigan, hmm. who's responsible if he clogs the toilet? As he does on a regular basis, I'm told. Through the grapevine. 
I've heard ah, from some people. Yes. That's the problem. That's the problem. Um, I feel like uh, you know that you cross that bridge when it when it happens. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't go there uh, with his toilet. Well, his I've heard toilet. many people have disappeared after such things have happened because they won't pay out. <laughs> That's yeah. I would believe that to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me that as a fact, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I am most certainly not telling you that as a fact. I will legally say. <laughs> Presented like a fact. I'm just saying. <laughs> Presented like a fact, but I will definitely say. <laughs> Although, no, maybe I do want to say that because I imagine that lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> could be bigger than Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah. Prince Charles, in fact. And then he has to prove it. I want to put him on. If 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 I get sued, I'm putting him on the stand and making him <laughs> at least answer whether, whether he has clogged a friend's toilet in Michigan. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you're trying with lots of other questions. You know, like I see you're kind of losing your hair a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> This one study says. <laughs> there we go. Like, uh, hey, I'm an expert witness. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's a fact, but I will ask the question. Is Prince Charles losing his hair from over masturbation? <laughs> has been denied. <laughs> yeah. Ever. <laughs> no one's ever come out and said that's not what's happening. So <laughs> until it's addressed, gotta, you, you know, you can, I can't uh, rule it out until it's been addressed. That's it's never been it's never been ruled out. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I'm just going to assume it's to be. Somebody has so many cease and desist letters. <laughs> it's gonna be wild. <laughs> Yeah, but that means nothing because they have to sue to back it up. So if we receive a cease and desist letter, <laughs> just know that you're going to have to take us to court and you're going to have to go into detail to prove that what we are saying is not accurate. <laughs> there has to be hard scientific evidence <laughs> yeah. for all of these things. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if like, some news article came out and said that like There's how do you find something? out <laughs> get a job at whatever newspaper and then publish. dear new york times <laughs> i am a journalist <laughs> i write stories for you i guess i've been <laughs> deep undercover <laughs> let me tell you about this particular story uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun, uh, but yeah, I, 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 that would be that would be great. Actually, that would be great to see what how that played out in in, a, in an actual court. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, because I mean, how do they prove that it's not true? That's well, the I, I, say that you have a broke person who has nothing to lose and just goes out there saying whatever. Mm. How would someone? who actually is big and famous and whatever, stop that from happening. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but um, there must be something. Welcome to <laughs> legal talk with <laughs> in-depth legal experts. <laughs> just like, yeah, why don't we just fucking say whatever the fuck? <laughs> Fine, I'll say it. Prince Charles murdered, I don't know. Who? I told you that in confidence. <laughs> Prince Charles murdered. I don't know. Yeah, if I had a JFK, a rocking horse. JFK. <gasps> what? <laughs> he was on the grassy knoll. No, I fucking knew it. I knew that for one hundred percent fact. That was him. Yeah. Well, you learned something new. Guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even that, yeah. like imagine him having to defend that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It would be. It would be pretty interesting. I mean, I apologize. He's obviously an avid listener and we're only joking, obviously. No. No. That's all true. <laughs> we he found is. his personal diary. He's a we're big. reading it. <laughs> Tune in next week <laughs> when we reveal <laughs> some more. <laughs> Who shot on his bed? <laughs> Tune in next week when you find out how the prince got into golden showers and brown spice. <laughs> yeah, so good episode next week. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna leave if we're still alive either. and not like disappeared by somebody. <laughs> Just knock at the door, coming in there. Have an area. Imagine that was true. Like the, the knock on the door part, and we're like. What the fuck? We saw your podcast. It was you. Uh, you want an autograph or something? I mean, of course he listens. Uh, that's yeah. why I don't want to be too mean. As I wanted to make clear, we're joking. Hey, he's a big fan. He writes to us all the time. I mean, just guess he hits send, but he does write to us. <laughs> He hasn't got time. He's doing his princey things. So. Yeah. He writes, um, he's, a, he's a stand for the show. Yeah. As, as he should be. Yeah. As uh, everyone should be. For sure. <laughs> so it was a good episode this week. I liked it. I think uh, there was, there was no uh, mention of Babe Station for the first time, which is very, yeah. very unusual. Well, um, I mean, I, I can't write the article. So if they don't interview Babe Station, Former employees, what am I supposed to do? I mean, you could call them up. Be like, give us some juicy stories. So it'd be fun to call them and yeah, ask them for that. <laughs> hey, uh, I just want to ask you, like, what's the funniest thing you've heard <laughs> on a call? I'm not and, uh, I am not losing my hair right now. But just tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's too late for that. So <laughs> But <laughs> it's uh, an interesting one, you know. <laughs> well, on that note, check it back next week for yeah. what's happening on Babe Station. Absolutely. <laughs> and <laughs> Prince Charles Diaries, page three. <laughs> the juicy details start on page four. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might actually try writing Prince Charles Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a project. It's a project. But <laughs> yeah, fun one. All right, well, that was cool. Um, so yeah, good times. Good times. Yeah, right, you're gonna have to make sure you listen in next week to Prince Charles Diaries, the official <laughs> one. I'm gonna break into his house, and you'll be hearing some excerpts. Don't announce it before it happens. Be like, oh shit, no, I'm not gonna do that. No, 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 no. I'm gonna break in. Ah. Uh, like after we record this, but before it's released. So they won't know what's coming. Ah, sweet. All right, uh, cool. Yeah. That, that works. Stay tuned for that.